let's talk about cash on cash return. And by the way, this is a follow up on a video I did about cash flow basics. To analyze your cash on cash return, you would divide your annual return of cash, which was in the past video that I did, about $20,000 by your actual cash investment of $65,000, which was your down payment. This gives you a 31% return on your cash invested. There are few investments out there that yield this kind of return, which is why many, many people love investing in real estate. If we were to take into account principal repayment and property appreciation, your return would go up even more. Now, keep in mind that cash flow can be fluid. Cash flow is really a function of many inputs and any of them changing can damage or improve the cash flow scenario. Some of the functions are influenced by the real estate markets and some by the general economy. For example, if a major local employer closes or moves, the demand for residential rental property can plummet overnight because the employment isn't there. Uh, you obviously can't control this, but hopefully you can avoid disaster by doing your due diligence about the health and plans of local employers, especially large ones. You're probably in good shape if they're profitable with a long lease recently renewed or, or just signed. Um, other factors that are mostly out of your control are real estate taxes and property insurance rates. So taxes and insurance premiums can increase, raising operating costs and lowering operating income and cash flow. However, the good news is that these negative factors can be compensated for with other factors over which you do have some control. For example, you might be able to find ways to reduce marketing, management and maintenance costs. And of course, you can raise rents if the rental market is strong. Um, for, for other people like me who are in Ontario, this is really dependent on what rent control allows. Um, even if you have the right to raise rents at your discretion, this can be a delicate balance because it might increase vacancies. And keep in mind that lost income from more vacant units can easily, easily wipe out any gains from increased rents. This is definitely not the only way to calculate cash flow for a rental property, but it's likely the simplest way. You can also slot, slot in other calculations as you run numbers to see if the returns from a property will meet your expectations. Other ways to calculate returns include any tax savings you might realize thanks to a specific property ownership structure, and others are used to break down the net operating income and go from there. At the end of the day, uh, I find this is probably the simplest formula um, that can give you a simple starting point to see the big picture when you're considering a specific rental property purchase.